Hello, friends. This is Pastor Danny Ray from the Gordon Avenue Baptist Church in Adel, Georgia. And, of course, we're bringing you our live stream Wednesday evening service from our home. And I uh, figured we'd start this evening service just like we do our morning service. Good cup of fresh coffee. Nothing like coffee in Jesus. Or should I say Jesus in coffee? Jesus is a lot more important than coffee, but coffee is certainly good. Uh, wanted to come on just a little bit early and give everybody the opportunity to uh, begin to come on. And uh, had a lot going on today. Uh, had a very busy day, but it's been a good day. Uh, this evening we're going to continue our thoughts that we've been doing on uh, Wednesday evening on the I Am's of Jesus, and we'll be in John's Gospel, chapter 10, and we'll look at verse 7 and verse 9 as our text, uh, verses of Scripture this evening. I want to pause just a little bit and uh, think about those that stand in need of prayer. Uh, Marta and I lost a very uh, good friend, and she lost a classmate today, uh, Mr. Brad McCall. That was one of her uh, classmates, and Brad was a good friend. Uh, I just couldn't help but go and look at the glass on the back of my pickup truck. He fixed me a beautiful uh, law enforcement cross knowing that I was chaplain with the Barron County Sheriff's Department and he fixed it and sent it to me and uh, told me to put it on the windshield of my truck. I'll always treasure that now and uh, we'll certainly miss Brad. So I certainly would ask that you be in prayer for the Brad McCall family. Uh, we've also uh, got others that we need to be in prayer for. We certainly want to remember all of those on our prayer list. Uh, hadn't got my over-the-ear microphone on this evening. I hope maybe that you all can hear me okay. I uh, have mic'd the phone, and uh, so it is mic'd, but uh, I just decided to see if this mic that we have that I can just attach to the phone uh, will work a little bit better and I don't have to have that thing over my ear. So if you're able to hear me okay, just uh, kind of shoot me a message and let me know that uh, that you can hear me okay. Uh, we want to remember uh, the Tomberlin family uh, also. Uh, they've got uh, a loved one on uh, the uh, vent in the hospital. Uh, Miss Carol's a good friend. Uh, Kind of talked uh, with uh, my uh, my wife a number of years. Uh, just had one or two to say that you can hear me great. Thank you, Kim. I appreciate that very much. Uh, okay, Deborah, you you're hearing everything all right, Miss Margie. I see you're hearing everything all right. That's great. That's great. Uh, Let's remember all of those on our prayer list uh, from the church. We have a number of people. We'd ask also this evening that you remember Miss Marta. Miss Marta uh, had a little bit of scare today. Uh, she started feeling a little bit bad yesterday, and uh, I encouraged her to go on to the doctor now, and uh, so she did. And praise God, uh, you know, it's sad that we're living in times like this, but the least little sniffle you get, the first thing you think is, oh, goodness, COVID. Uh, but uh, Miss Marta's got a sinus infection, and uh, they gave her some antibiotics, uh, tested her for COVID, and praise God, she didn't have COVID, so we praise the Lord for that. Uh, let's remember... Uh, Terry Holton, member of our church, uh, was diagnosed with COVID, and uh, she uh, certainly needs our prayer. She's doing well, uh, got the infusion, and it has helped her, so she's doing well, and so we praise the Lord for that. Uh, any other prayer request? Anybody else got prayer request? If you got a prayer request, just uh, kind of 
mention it in the comments column. Let's continue to pray for California. Our California listeners uh, always ask for prayer for those wildfires that's going on out there. I think they might have got a little rain out there, and that's helped that situation a little bit. So we praise the Lord for that. You know, we started our call to prayer five weeks ago, and uh, today I've learned that uh, the numbers for COVID uh, is down somewhat, and uh, that was one of the reasons we started our call to prayer, that uh, we wanted to pray that those numbers would uh, subside a little bit and go down, and uh, it seems to be. Uh, Vera says, remember her in prayer. She's uh, recovering from a surgery, so let's remember Vera. Uh, the family of uh, Respy James, let's remember that request. Uh, certainly want to pray for those that's lost loved ones and going through a bunch right now. Uh, Miss Marta got some good antibiotics, so she'll be on the mend pretty quick. We're grateful for that. Uh, Give you just a few more moments with your prayer request. Y'all don't mind me drinking coffee, do you? I always start my morning with coffee and conversation. I decided to wear my coffee and conversation t shirt this evening and just kinda enjoy coffee a little bit as we as we study the word of God. It's just a, a good thing to do. Any more prayer requests? Uh, let's see, Kim, uh, having meningitis twice, still doing some damage to her, uh, vision loss, uh, Kim would certainly be praying for you, and, uh, you're going to be having some surgery on the 30th, uh, we'll sure remember you in our prayers, and we appreciate you tuning in, we sure do. Uh, June, uh, has lung cancer, Deborah, we'll be in prayer for June, uh, she sent to your house on hospice care. You know, I was a hospice chaplain for over 12 years, and uh, so hospice is a good thing. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll certainly be in prayer for, for your sister, okay? Uh, in fact, one of the old hospice nurses that used to work with me at the hospice of Tift area, Jennifer Pippin, her mother passed away this morning, so let's remember that family, okay? Anybody else? Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, first of all, we give you praise and we thank you, dear Lord, for the opportunity you give us to worship. And uh, God, uh, you have uh, saw each request that's been listed in the comment column of our little page, and certainly we lift all of those up to you, uh, asking that you might minister, God, healing to bodies where there's uh, been uh, damage and sickness, uh, Kim with the meningitis and then the surgery that she'll be facing the 30th, uh, the McCall family, uh, the Deborah's uh, sister that's got cancer and on hospice care, uh, Jennifer Pippin's family. Uh, good gracious Lord, the list could just go on and on. The Tomlin family, Lord we lift them up to you and their loved one that's in the hospital on a vent. We pray for uh, their son. Lord, uh, we pray for our little church family that you'll keep us safe and we give you praise for the Gordon Avenue people and we praise you for those who have begun to tune in from outside of our little congregation and we praise you for those who are listening by way of Facebook Live. God bless uh, each and every one. Bless those on our prayer list, those names that have been placed in our little prayer box at the church. God, we just pray that you'll bless and touch lives. Thank you, dear Lord, for hearing our prayer about trying to get these COVID numbers to uh, go down just a little bit. And God, we praise you that they have. Thank you, dear Lord, for these little prayer meetings that we're having on Saturday at 11 o'clock. And thank you for those who are being faithful to those. Now, God, as we get ready to look at your word, use this this evening for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, uh... Again, if you will, take your Bibles, turn with me over to the book of John, chapter number 10. We'll look at verse 7 and verse number 9 as our text verse of Scripture. Uh, while you're turning, uh, let me just go ahead and say uh, we will have another call to prayer 
Saturday at 11 o'clock at the Brushy Creek Baptist Church. Uh, anybody in the Sparks, Georgia area, the Adel area, Cook County area, Marion County area, we invite you to come over to uh, Brushy Creek Baptist Church, 11 o'clock Saturday, to pray with us. Prayer has changed things and can continue to change things if we'll just be faithful. All right, let's look at the Word of God together. The Bible says here in uh, John 10, 7, then Jesus, or then said rather Jesus, unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. Now look down at verse 9. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out and find pasture. Well, friend, I want to continue uh, those uh, I am thoughts. Here Jesus said, I am the door. Now, Jesus protects his followers as shepherds protect their flock from predators. You know, whenever we begin to look at this, uh, I mean, when I think of a door, in a, a modern day, thinking of a door, the first thing we think about is the front door of a house. Now, my wife decided that she didn't like the brown front door, so we uh, took it off the hinges, covered up the door uh, facings, and uh, set it on some uh, sawhorses, and we painted it red. Now, the outside of the door is red, but the inside of the door is still brown to match the woodwork. And uh, it sure changed the appearance of the house. But when I think of a door, I think of the modern day front door at a house. And it's so easy to apply our perspective to scripture rather than applying scripture to our perspective. Even though I could take you on a creative journey about how I am the door could be connected with a house if you really look at this in the context of John 10, it's actually talking about a gate entrance, a, a door to a pasture of sheep. Now, the original Greek word in the Strong's Concordance is seda, seda, uh, which means door. And uh, of course, that's a noun meaning door. Now, he shares in the parable, uh, metaphorically, that the door through which the sheep go out and in, the name of him who brings salvations to those who follow his guidance is none other than Jesus Christ, our Lord. He is the door to our salvation. A door is a symbol of protection. A door is a symbol of security for those on the inside of the building or for those on the inside of the pasture. But an image of, uh, of distance and barrier to those who are on the outside. In other words, it keeps those outside from coming in. Now, a person can look at a community of God within his flock uh, and uh, never know or never knock on the door. And if he don't knock on the door, he'll never enter. The beautiful part about the Lord Jesus Christ is that he is the door and praise God, he lets us in. He lets us in. Deborah, I see that you're going to be praying from Alabama at 11 o'clock. Praise God. You pray with us. Listen, I fear that many people feel that the door of heaven is permanently closed and locked for them. In fact, friend, I am concerned that many of our loved ones uh, believe that they're too far gone. But friend, I've got news for you. You're not too far gone. The truth is that we were all locked out of God's presence by our sin. Uh, and that happened in Genesis 3. Sin came into being and it separates us from God. Sin separated, but Jesus opened the pathway to God again. Now, it makes me think about the veil being torn from top to bottom, and we'll talk about that just a little bit later. Uh, it makes me think about that veil being tore from, torn from top to bottom as a symbol of the barrier of sin holding us from the presence of God. 
But friend, it don't hold us anymore because we're 100% welcome because of Jesus. Listen, because of Jesus, only by his blood are we able to come into the security and the joy of being in the family of God. Now, as we begin to look at the door, Jesus said, I am the door. There are three doors that I want to speak to you about, and then we'll get into something a little bit different as we close things out. Door number one that I want to speak to you about is the door to Noah's ark. In Genesis chapter 7, verse 1, uh, the Bible says, And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark. For thee have I seen righteousness before me in this generation. Now, if you notice that verse of Scripture, my friend, notice that God says, Come thou in. He didn't say, Go thou in. He said, Come thou thou in. Now, if I'm outside and you were to be visiting my home and my wife was inside the house, if you were to be visiting and you found me outside, I would probably look at you and tell you, go on in, go on in. But now, if I'm inside of the house with my wife and you knock on the door, my friend, if you knock on that door, I'm going to say, hey, come on in. Well, I knocked on the desk, and now my little dog has got in the spirit. <laughs> but that's all right, too. But I, I'm i going to say, come on in. If I'm inside uh, and you knock on my door, I'm going to say, come on in. Do you see the picture that I'm trying to paint for you here? God was already inside of the ark waiting for Noah and his family. You see, the open door on Noah's ark was a type of Christ who opened the door for salvation. That door was open so that anyone who would listen to the preaching of this man of God could have walked on to that ark. The animals walked on. Noah preached for 120 years, and no one but his family, no one but his family walked onto the ark. So Jesus is a type of that open door on the ark. But you got to understand, Right now, the door is open, but one day, that door will be closed. That door will be closed. Let me tell you something. When God closed the door to that ark, it was shut tight. In other words, he closed the door, and there wasn't a man alive that could open it. That door remained closed until they arrived uh, to their destination. And so door number one is the door to Noah's ark. God still, his blessed invitation is still, come thou in. Praise God. Well, I'm so glad it's still, come thou in. But then I want us to look at the door number two. Door number two is the torn veil that I mentioned just a few moments ago. Do you know and realize that you and I were locked out of the throne room of God and only the high priest could go in only once a year to make sacrifice for the sins of the people. In Matthew 27, verse 50 and verse 51, the Bible says here, Jesus, when he cried again with a loud voice, he yielded up the ghost. He died on the cross of Calvary. And the Bible says, and behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from top to bottom. And the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. Oh, my friend, whenever I begin to think about this door, what a great door it was that opened for us here today. Praise God, Jesus opened the door to you and to me to where we could go right into the throne room of God at any given moment, day or night, and call upon the name of God. Friend, I don't know about you, but that just about make a Baptist shout right there. Amen. Knowing that we can go into God's throne room at any given time. Now, historically speaking, it is said that the holy men of that day tried to repair the veil. Now, I don't know that. The Bible doesn't say that, but I could possibly see them doing that that the religious leaders of that day, they went in and they tried to repair the veil. Now, I've often said that haywire will fix anything. 
That's what we used to say as a country boy growing up. If granddaddy had something to mess up on the tractor and he couldn't find a bolt, he'd just go get him a roll of hay wire and he'd stick that thing uh, in the bolt hole and, and he'd just wrap it around and around and around until he had enough of it wrapped that it'd do the holding that it needed. Up. And I just like to think that maybe they got him some hay wire or some kind of something and they'd pull that veil back together and they'd put it back together. And historically speaking, uh, somebody said that they went back in the next morning and the door was opened again. It just wouldn't stay closed. And finally, they just left it alone. You know what I see in that? When God opens a door, there's not a man alive that can close it. And God has opened the door for you and I to reach into the very throne room of God at any time. I've never called and got a busy signal. You know, years ago, we didn't have all these fancy things on our phones like we got now. We've got call waiting, call forwarding, and all this. Years ago, I, hey, I can remember when we had a party line. And sometimes us youngins would get on that phone and have a party, and we'd get run off real quickly. But uh, I can remember whenever we'd have one line, one phone line coming into the house, and listen, I can remember uh, sometimes when we'd be away, and back in those days we didn't have a cell phone, we'd walk up to the pay phone. And listen, I, I, I guess probably the cheapest I remember making a phone call for was a dime. Uh, got to be a quarter, but I remember making phone calls for a dime. Put a dime in the phone, dial, dial home. Uh, there was times that uh, I had something going on. I wasn't going to make it home on time. So I put a dime in that paper and called home trying to get in touch with Mama to let her know that I was going to be a little bit late. And I'd get this, beep, 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 beep. And, and you know, 10 or 15 minutes later, go back and try to call again, beep, beep, beep. The line was busy. Uh, Mama enjoyed talking on the telephone. And uh, so the line was busy. Maybe she was talking to her mother or her sister or some of the family. But uh, listen, <laughs> I've never called God and got that beep, beep, beep. I've never called him at any given time and, and been put on hold. God always answers. And you can walk into the throne room of God at three o'clock in the morning. Listen, I, I, I tell my people at Gordon Avenue, and Gordon Avenue, you know I'm telling you the truth. I've never called him and not heard him say to my heart in that small, still voice, here am I. I've, I've even stopped and just said, God, are you still with me? Just to see if I could hear that small, still voice speak to my heart, son, here am I. And, and I get that, praise God. I, I, I get that every time I call his precious name, son, here am I. Thrills my soul. So we have access. We have access to the very throne room of God. But then I want to talk to you about another door. I want to talk to you about the door to the church. And it burdens my heart to talk to you about this one in a sense. I'm glad that the door to the church is open. I mean, uh, Jesus built uh, the church. Uh, in Revelation chapter 3, verse 20 through verse 22, notice what Jesus said. Now, Jesus has talked about seven different churches. I, listen, I preached this from the point of this being the Laodicean church, but I got to looking at this scripture today, and it jumped out at me in a way that it has never jumped out at me before. Jesus has, has preached to seven churches. He's not talking about just the Laodicean church. He's talking about all the churches. He says here, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. It is a sad, sad day that Jesus is outside of the church having to knock on its door to get in. Now, we preachers will use that scripture and... Uh, and, you know, we were, <laughs> I was taught in seminary don't take a scripture out of its context, but here's one that I've taken out of context many times. Uh, Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock, the door of your heart. He's knocking on your heart's door. Yes, I've used it that way. 
But if you really look at this scripture in the context that it's written in, Jesus has preached to seven churches. He's told them what's good about them. He's told them what's bad about them. And there's more bad than good in most of them. And Jesus says here, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man hear my voice and open the door, I'll come in to him and will sup with him, fellowship with him, and he with me. And to him that overcometh, I will grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and sit down with my father in the throne. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. Now, 1985, probably, 86, might have been 87. I, I might, you know, my, my, my mind fails me now. I'm getting a little bit older, but it might have been 1987. I was pastor of the Gordon Avenue Baptist Church in those days. I made a complete circle. I'm back where I started. But listen, uh, I remember getting uh, my choir director to slip out the back door of the church and uh, we synchronized our watches. And I remember telling him, I want you to frame that door at this particular time. And I glanced down at my watch. Well, to be honest with you, they used to have a clock on the back wall uh, to remind me that, uh, hey, it's time to stop. But most of the time I wasn't finished and I didn't stop. But anyway, uh, I looked and the time was to, to, to cry out. And I said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And about the time I said that, my choir director started framing the door, beating the door. And uh, I wish you could have saw the congregation turn around and look at that door. I said, Well, somebody get up and let Jesus in. But that's exactly what he's talking about here. It's sad that our Lord has been locked out of many churches and that he has to fram and beat on the door trying to get back in. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 and verse 14, the Bible says here, Enter ye in at the straight gate, at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be that go in thereat. Now listen to this. Straight is the gate, and narrow is the way that leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Now let's get back to our thought. Jesus said, I am the door. Well, what does this door provide for us? I'm going to give you four things, and we'll stop. It provides much more than that, but I'm going to give you four things. First of all, this door, Jesus Christ, provides for us deliverance. He provides for us deliverance. Now in Psalm 34, verse 17, the Bible says, The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and delivereth them out of their trouble. Let me tell you something. It's good whenever you're righteous, and you know you're right with God, that you can just cry out to God, and know that God will hear you, and deliver you out of your trouble. Now, I don't mean that he'll deliver you out of your trouble in the way that you want to be delivered. He'll deliver you out of your trouble the way that he wants to deliver you. Uh, sometimes it may be uh, healing of a body. Sometimes it may be healing of a soul. Sometimes it may be uh, ministering by something that you need. Sometimes God just may call you home and give you... Uh, a, a life, what are we living for? To live forever, amen? Uh, I remember whenever I was a hospice chaplain, we had a meeting at uh, a church, and there were several different denominations of people that were meeting there. And I remember this one preacher, and I won't call his denomination because I don't need to, but he stood to his feet and he said, Preacher, I have one question for you. How many people have you prayed for that got healed? And I said to him, Brother, every one of them. He looked at me really shocked when I said that. He said, What do you mean? I said, uh, I've seen some people healed physically. I said, But I saw a lot more healed ultimately. 
What do you mean? I said, I've watched as God called saints of God home out of a body that was suffering. I said, by the way, I said, uh, I can count how many people I've been able to see healed on my hands physically. I said, but I preached 52 funerals last year. That was one funeral a week whenever I was a hospice chaplain. So, friends, we treat death like it's like it's the worst thing that could ever happen to us. Jesus said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, uh, that we have to fear no evil, for he'll be with us. Uh, the Bible says, Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his saints. So, friends, we got a lot to be thankful for. I like what Jesus said, He that lives and believes in me never dies. Believest thou this? I do believe it. That one day... Uh, you'll read my obituary, but don't believe a word of it. I'll be more alive that day than I am right now. But we, we righteous can cry out to God, and he'll hear our prayer and deliver us. In Colossians chapter 1, verse 12 and 13, listen to what the Bible says. Giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who had delivered us, listen, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness, hallelujah, and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son. Friend, thank God that he's delivered us from the darkness of sin. Secondly, we'll deal with that. Not only does he provide, this door provide deliverance, but this door also provides omitted to sins. What are you talking about, preacher? Well, over in Romans chapter 4, verse 7, listen to what the Bible says. Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. And the psalmist said in Psalm 103, verse 12, As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Now, what does that mean? As far as east is from the west. Well, friend, the phrase, as far as east is from the west, is meant to communicate an infinite space. East is in one direction and west is in the other. This is different from north and south. You can travel north only so far to the geographical north pole, then you're forced to travel south. Thus, north and south meet at the poles. But east and west never meet. Did you catch that? East and west never meet. No matter how far you travel east, you will never reach a point at which your next step must be westward. Therefore, God in his wisdom did not say as far as from north to south, Rather, he said, as far as east is from west. The idea here is that when God forgives, he really forgives. Our sins, my friend, if you're saved by the grace of God, they've been removed from us as far as it is as possible to imagine. It is a statement of complete and utter forgiveness. Once our sins have been removed, we will never be held accountable for them again. They never, ever come back to haunt us. Now, the devil will try to make them. When the devil reminds you of your past, remind him of his future. They are omitted by the power of the blood of the Lamb of God, God's door, Jesus Christ. But then there's a third thing that we have in this door, Jesus Christ. We have overcoming power, overcoming power. Now, in the book of Romans chapter 8, verses 35 through 39, the Bible says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? And then there's a list of things. Shall tribulation, friend, I've been through tribulation, but I still had and felt the love of Christ. Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword. As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. And then notice what Paul says. No, nay, 
In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I'm persuaded, listen, that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Friends, let me tell you something. You and I possess in our mortal bodies the power of the Holy Ghost of God, and you and I possessed in our mortal bodies the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. And we are more than conquerors in Christ. Friends, we have overcoming power. This door Jesus provides that overcoming power. And then the last thing that I want you to see is that in this door, Jesus Christ, we have restoration. Now in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19, the Bible says, to wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ. Listen, that is, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. For God so loved the world. I've told you so many times, you could take that word world out there and write your name. For God so loved Kim. For God so loved Mary. For God so loved Deborah. For God so loved Amanda. For God so loved Steve. For God so loved Pam. For God so loved Marta. For God so loved Danny. And the list could go on and on and on of everyone who may be tuning in. For God so loved Jake. For God so loved Margie. Uh, everybody that's listening in, take that word world out and write your name there. For God so loved you, for God so loved you that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have, listen, but have, well, I like that but, but have, but have everlasting life. So God uh, was in Christ reconciling you to himself uh, not counting people's sins against him. Now listen, you and I, we count sins. And we'll look and we consider this a big sin. And well, this is not so bad. But I want to tell you something. You've heard people say, well, it was just a little white lie. Well, it's just as black as the darkest lie. Sin is still sin, no matter how big or little we might try to make it. Uh, but God doesn't count people's sins against them, but he counsels them out whenever we come to the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, when we walk into that door. And listen, he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. That is restoration to f and favor with God. Now, this favor comes by walking through the door God has provided. What is the door? Who is the door? Jesus is the door. You've got to walk in Jesus. Well, friend, as I bring this thing to a close, the Prince of Preachers, Charles Spurgeon, wrote this. He said, By perseverance, the snail finally reached the ark. You know, we've had a lot of rain our, down our way lately. In fact, I couldn't even cut my backyard uh, uh, the latter part of last week had to cut it this morning after it dried out some. But uh, I noticed a couple of little snails on my front porch. And I sit there and I watch them. Well, them things are slow. I mean, they are really, really slow. But Charles Spurgeon said this. He said, by perseverance, the snails finally reach the ark. Now, breaking the analogy down in a children's book, a lady by the name of Dorothy M. Stewart writes about the highs and lows of the snail's journey toward the ark. She said, far away and unsure if it can make it in time, the snail watches all the other animals racing past him. Nobody seems to care to help him. Nobody seems to be aware of his inability to move fast enough to get onto the ark. But Noah, Noah, however, 
reaches down and picks up the snails and promises that he'll make it in time before the door of the ark shuts. While doubting his own ability, the snails trust in the ability of his provider to take him where he needed to go was all that he needed. Friend, it's hard to hurry when you're a snail. You ever thought about that? It's hard to hurry when you're a snail. And I want you to know that we too have someone who provides for us and carries us right where we need to go. Jesus is the door. And God is the provider. Now I want to ask you something. Will you walk through the door of Christ today into his ark of safety? Jesus is the door. Why? Because he said, I am the door. Pray with me. Father, I have delivered to your people that that you trusted to me. And I had a hallelujah jubilee time as we put this thing together. In fact, I couldn't hardly sit still. You just really squeezed my heart. There's a time or two you squeezed my heart so much that juice ran out my eyes. Thank you, God. Thank you for being the door and providing eternal salvation for us. I know, God, that times seem dark. But God, they're only dark if we let them be dark. Because we studied last week that you're the light of the world. And if we've got that light living in our heart and we walk through that door, that light can dispel all darkness. Help us live our lives in such a way that we dispel darkness, Lord, because you reminded us that we too are lights and that we need to shine forth. God, I pray that this message has reached into someone's heart this evening. And Lord, if they do not know you in the free pardon and forgiveness of sin, may this be the hour of commitment and decision. Thank you, dear Lord, for this powerful message. Use it for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you so much, and thank you for tuning in. Again, let me remind you, uh, if you're in our area, to uh, meet with us at 11 o'clock at Brushy Creek Baptist Church uh, Saturday. If you're not in our area, just take the time to stop and pray. Uh, I see my California friends got on, and uh, we did have prayer for you, uh, Loretta, and you and your sister. I hope that maybe y'all got, I saw you posted y'all have been getting some rain. I hope maybe that it has helped with those wildfires out there. Uh, again, thank you all for tuning in. God bless you so much. Continue to pray for those who are suffering. Can pray for those families that's lost loved ones. There are so, so many who are going through struggles right now. Uh, but God's able. Amen? God is able. Uh, let me remind you that we will have an in-house service at the Gordon Avenue Baptist Church. Uh, of course, we'll live stream that service as well, but we will have an in-house service Sunday. Sunday school at 9.30. Uh, morning worship at... Uh, 1030. So uh, you uh, tune in, or if you're in the Adel area, we certainly invite you to come and worship with us. God bless you. Have a good evening.